Welcome to this presentation video on the Spooks software. Spooks is a software using Frank Hansen's soil pressure theory to design sheet pile walls. Both free and anchored walls can be designed and anchors in one level can be taken into account. The sheet pile walls are widely used in Denmark, especially in urban areas for deep excavations or, for example, parking basements. It should be emphasized that Spooks is not an expert system, but rather a tool for experts. The program should therefore only be used by users with a knowledge about the soil pressure theory. In other words, if you put rubbish into the program, you'll get rubbish out. This video will give a short introduction to the Spooks software. It is assumed that the viewer has knowledge about Blankensen's soil pressure theory and this theory will therefore not be explained here. The software can be found by this icon here with the name Sheet Pile Walls. Double click on the icon to open the program. The software has a rather simple user surface. When opening the program you basically have two options. In the file menus you can either 1. Start a new project or to continue from an already existing project. For now, we'll try starting a new project. When starting a new project, two new menus open. It is a parameters menu here and the calculations menu here. These two menus are the most used menus when designing sheet pile walls with this software. To design a sheet pile wall, you need to open the parameters menu and fill in all the tabs in this menu correctly. First, one needs to find the calculation method. It is possible to choose between free and anchored sheet pile walls. When choosing the free option, it should be imagined as if the anchor is not a part of the construction. The failure mechanisms normally covered by textbooks about Van Kansen's soil pressure theory are the free sheet pile wall and the anchored sheet pile wall with 0, 1 and 2 plastic hinge, respectively. The free sheet pile wall is failure mechanism C, so choose failure mechanism C and free sheet pile wall. The anchored sheet pile wall without any plastic hinge is failure mechanism A. So choose Anchored and Failure Mechanism A. The Anchored Sheet Pile Wall with one plastic hinge is Failure Mechanism B. So choose Anchored and Failure Mechanism B. And the Anchored Sheet Pile Wall with two plastic hinge is Failure Mechanism D. So choose Anchored and Failure Mechanism D. Note that for the latter failure mechanism, it's necessary to give an input about IB down here. According to the manual, this value can be set equal to 1 in the case that the sheet pile wall has a sufficient driving depth and that the wall has the same section modulus in the entire depth. So put in 1 here. Press OK to continue. After the failure mechanism is chosen, it's necessary to give some input about the geometry of the wall. All the geometry is based on a levering system chosen by the user itself. However, it's normally easier to use the general levering system to give the geometric input. In the parameters menu and the wall tab, the user should state the upper level of the wall, corresponding normally to the ground surface on the back side. That could, for example, be in level 0. Press OK to continue. In the parameters and stratification, the user must give input about the substrata on the location of the sheet pile wall. The upper table here concerns the back side of the sheet pile wall, while the lower table here concerns the front side of the sheet pile wall. The first column set gives input about the upper level 
of the layer in question. The two next columns here gives information about the dry unit weight and the saturated unit weight of the soil. The dry unit weight is applied about above the groundwater table and the saturated unit weight is applied below the groundwater table. The next two columns give input about the strength of the soil represented by the cohesion and the angle of shearing resistance respectively. The sixth column is the gradient in case of a groundwater flow. Note here that the sign convention is that a downwards flow is positive. The last column here is the roughness, and the roughness can vary between 0 and 1. 0 means that the wall is totally smooth, while 1 means that the wall is totally rough. The program can handle up to five different soil layers on each side, and the ground surface can either it can further be inclined by the parameters B2 and B1 here. On the front side here, the first set value should correspond to the excavation level. Press OK to continue. In the water levels tab, the user should give input about the water level on the front and the back side. This is again done by the chosen levering system. The upper cell here gives information about the water level on the front side, F for front, and the lower cell gives information about the water level on the back side, B for back. Press OK to continue. Hereafter the loads on the front and the back side must be entered in the parameters and the loads tab. Again here, F refers to front and B refers to back. The level set R refers to the level where the load on the back side affects the wall. If the load is a uniformly distributed load on the entire ground surface, this level should be set equal to the ground surface. However, if the load is a point load acting in a certain distance from the wall, the level to refer to is the level where the load affects the wall. This will be further demonstrated in example 2. Press OK to continue. In the partial coefficients tab, the user could enter values for the partial coefficients. Note here that the default values shown here does not correspond to the values from the Danish annex to the Eurocode. The partial coefficients can be changed to match the needs of the user and they can even be set equal to 1 in case that the input is the desired values. Press OK to continue. In the anchor tab, parameters anchor, the placement of the anchor should be entered. This is again done according to the chosen levering system. Press OK to continue. In the additional pressures tab, it's possible to enter additional pressure. The input is a level set where the pressure starts and the unit value of the pressure E set. Press OK to continue. Under project data, it's possible to give information about the job number, the job name, subject, the initials of the user, and the date. This is especially useful if conducting multiple calculations. In the last tab, the unit tab, it's possible to change the unit weight of water. It is by default set to 10 kN per cubic meter. It's also possible to change the length unit and the force unit. Normally the default options will be OK. Press OK to continue. After all the input has been entered, it's time to calculate the project. This is done in the calculation menu and press calculate. Right now it's not possible to calculate the project as the 
input is not sufficiently given. But when calculation is started, a DOS program will open. Let the program calculate and then close the DOS window to proceed to the result. The calculations is done by an iterative procedure and will not use the correction formulas. The program keeps guessing of the height or the placement of the yield thing until moment equilibrium is obtained. The result can be examined in both a graphic and a text style. This option will be further demonstrated in the two examples.